All right. This is uh, this is this is Professor Anna Radzminska. And yeah. Yes. Um, who is an expert? She is a professor at the University of Arkansas, and she and one of her expertise is, is in the uh, area of um, synthetic can, can, cannabinoids. Well, in, indeed, in, in cannabis altogether. But what we're going to talk about is the effects of synthetic cannabinoids. Uh, and, and I'm Chris Busby, and you've seen me before. And we're going to talk about cannabis because it seems to me that there's a serious problem here which she's raised, which she's now going to just briefly tell me about using the, her presentation. So this is presentation from last year in the same conference. And this is comparison of natural and synthetic cannabinoids. And I call it the good, the bad, and the tragic, because it's really tragic story. So um, I will briefly tell you about the history of cannabinoids, which were the, the THC, the natural one, was discovered in 1964 in Hebrew University. And people were looking for the mechanism, and they discovered that the cannabinoids are working via cannabinoids receptor. Later on, two of those, CB1 and CB2, were found, identified, cloned. Now we have crystal structure. So uh, the word of cannabinoid comes from marijuana, from cannabis sativa, uh, a plant which is producing close to 40 different cannabinoids, natural cannabinoids with the main psychoactive constituent being THC. And uh, there's a lot of other compounds, but I would like to emphasize the effects of uh, the psychoactive compound THC, which is causing euphoria, alter perceptions, short-term memory impairment, decreased capacity to complex tax, balance its stability of stance effect. There's some problems, cardiovascular problems, like increased heart rate and mm. red eye. All those symptoms are relatively simple. What is munchies? A, what? what? Yeah. Munchies, oh, everybody <laughs> who smokes marijuana yeah. takes marijuana, has to eat, like within one hour, okay. eat okay. a big amount of, of food and I then see. falls to sleep. Okay. But okay. those people yeah, yeah. are not getting yeah. fat, so this is munchies. Okay. <laughs> you, you smoke, you are ha uh, happy, and yeah. you are hungry. Right. But all those effects are relatively short. And now there's an extremely hot uh, a topic of the finding of new therapeutic opportunities from marijuana plants. And as you can see, we can cure cancer, we can uh, protect against Alzheimer, we can protect the uh, destruction of bone. Bonus, but very important is anti proliferating activity. So there's a lot of actions, and right now, one after the other, the compounds are isol isolated and used for uh, as a medical, uh, like a medicine. There's a lot of another uh, uh, cannabinoids, and in addition to endogenous and Native, we have also a class of a synthetic cannabinoid, a receptor agonist. And I would like to pay your attention to this uh, group of compounds. I will show the structure in a moment. They are amino alkyl indoles. They are one of the most dangerous compounds available on the market for entertainment when, when, did, when, did they when did they turn up on the market? We're just coming to this. Yeah. Uh, so this is the, the uh, kind of father of, of the synthetic cannabinoids. 
that uh, we, ca we ca call them the face of legal high, and uh, they show on the market very recently, in 2010, in October. And this uh, gentleman, <coughs> who, is, who in this time was 49 years old, Scottish, and was former drug addict, uh, begin uh, began at the same uh, the whole K2 story. Uh, now we know that the, uh, the substance of abuse, and this person, together with pharmacologists in Purdue, began so-called abuse science. However, the major point of the story is the multi-dollar revenue. And you can see here in this place, like from thousand, uh, 2005, uh, 2005 to 2010, the production of cannabino synthetic cannabinoids uh, were identified in European Union and their production was very small. This guy's a chemist, right? Yes, yeah. those, they were chemists, but they did it for money. Yes. That's the major story. But as you can see here, in 2010, when those gentlemen uh, used the knowledge about cannabinoid receptor and started synthesizing new forms, uh, the production grew, and the danger became extremely uh, bad. So what is K2? K2 actually is the peak in Himalay, and it's one of the most dangerous uh, mountains to climb. As you can see, one out of four people die while ascending the K2. Mm -hmm. And that's the same story with people who use it and have genetic de de defect, de defects. Four out of the uh, people, one in four die uh, using K2. Was, so at one point I was going to ask you, what do they die of? A, we will come we'll to come this to in that. a moment. Okay, okay. And this is how the compounds are sold. You can see uh, they uh, they are synthesized in a lab. They are not plant like THC, but they are spray on a, any biological material. They are not marijuana, and they are so, uh, sold in in uh, small packages. So uh, they have other flash names like uh, spice, synthetic legal marijuana. And here we have the structures. When we compare the THC and then the major, the first uh, uh, compound which was uh, synthesized and put on the market, a uh, uh, JWH018, they are structurally are pretty different. The yeah. major story is they have this side chain. Yeah. However, they are good enough for cannabinoid receptors to be uh, recognized to to be recognized as the antagonist. And once more, those two specific compounds were synthesized in 1992. And the researchers started using this for controlling obesity in mice. Mm -hmm. That was the first application. That was the, the very safe application. And until the 2010, when they were put on the market for entertainment. And a, a, they were, like in 2004, sold on internet, in head shop, shop uh, very cheaply. Uh, people were instructed how to use or were just uh, just uh, offer a space in cannabinoids houses to use mm. them. So what do they do? And this is not exaggeration. I've seen those people in the hospital. Mm. So the small effects are anxiety, panic attacks, 
extreme agitation, hallucination, seizures. Then, in time, there's memory and learning problem. People totally lost a uh, sense of judgment, very dangerous driving, and there uh, the effects are causing immunosuppression. Mm -hmm. And then we are getting into serious problem, fatalities, which can be stroke, heart attack, uh, attacks, uh, hypertension. Uh, so, so this, uh, is, is this when they're taking the, the, the drug or afterwards or long afterwards? Or, or no, immediately. Imme these, so these yes, effects we're talking about, these are immediate oh, effects. They are okay. immediate effects. So in some, in some people who take these drugs, they're okay they, they, and they yes. don't suffer this, but in a proportion uh, no, of them. They, they suffer to a small amount. Right. And it also depends on how much, yeah. whether they ate before, you know, yeah, a lot okay. of circumstances. No, no, of but they are the genetic yes. mutants yes. who respond in a very, very dramatic way. And these are the way. ones who have different different way of metabolizing the material. Yes, then we will yeah. come yeah. to this, but okay. I will go pretty okay. quickly. Yeah. So here we have metabolism. And I would like to show you why those compounds are so dangerous. When we have, for example, uh, THC, the natural marijuana, it doesn't need any metabolism, a additional metabolism. Mm. It has carboxylic function, is glucuronidated, sugar is put mm. on it. In the morning, the person feels okay, okay. excreted, yeah, yeah. zero. Right. You know, it's racing about the body, but no effect. k are first of all processed by cytochromes before 50 to oxidize the derivatives and then to uh, conjugate it, a compound uh, like glucuronide and sulfate. But the worst part is that all native, hydroxylated, and conjugated are ligands for nuclear if or cannabinoid receptors. Right. So the process goes for days because it takes time to make hydroxylate, that makes like glucuronide, and each one with different ap uh, ap uh, affinity attacks the cannabinoid receptor. Structure. I don't know whether we are interested, but. No, I'm interested in this. I, I knew yeah. that you are interested, that's why I'm showing you <laughs> okay. what happens. Yeah. JWH018 is one compound which is, it has idle moiety alkyl side chain and the naphthalene. So one smokes and takes this compound, one compound, what happened? Then we have cytochromes P450, which work here, put hydroxyl group here, 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 and here. So all of a sudden, only with modification of this side chain, we have four compounds. Yeah. Then. What happens uh, next? We have this chain. So another cytochromes P450 put hydroxyl group and cut one carbon and mm. put carbon. So we have already six compounds from one, like in f within a few hours. And all of them move to the cannabinoid receptor. Has anyone worked out the affinity of these different metabolites? Yes, sure. Yeah. Uh, I, we, have, yeah. we published 26 papers, and all of this is there. So we have one compound, only one cytochrome P450 can cause six only metabolizing this and this. But we didn't even look for those NAFT. Mm. They are ad additional stories. So how did we discover this? What we can, um, how we can say what is producing human body? This is analysis MS, mass spectrometry analysis of all the oxidized forms of one compound. Mm. And um, you can see those are beautiful spectra. Great separation, starting from the small one, because the small one, the first one disappears. Those are the original one. 
and then we have all those six metabolites. Yes. And with M4 the most the dominating because the cytochrome P450 which makes it. And here is the story. If we don't have those cytochrome P450, we stick to those compounds and they cannot be metabolized. So they stay in our body. So this is glucuronidation reaction, gluc UTP glucuronic acid, sugar. When the cytochrome P450 work, put the hydroxyl function, then uh, UGTs attach sugar to, to, to the compound. So we have another set of compounds which also bind to cannabinoid receptor. We have 20 human UGTs, UDP glucuron transferases, majority of them produce the derivatives and the process happens in intestine and also in, first of all, liver, but also intestine and also brain because those compounds move to brain. Well, of course, they're all highly liposoluble um, and that seems to be what they have in common. But now we can talk, can we, about what, you, what, what happens to the people who take this stuff, okay? Okay, so here uh, I have uh, a, what happened to the people? Well, we can just talk about this now, because okay. I'm going to take so you Okay, so what this. happened to the people? Uh, everybody has a different genetic makeup. Right. And uh, we have approximately 50 cytochromes before 50 with in humans with several dominating express in about the all over the body and then the phase two and each of this protein can have polymorphic forms but listen hold on we're talking now you're talking now about the chemistry the biochemistry the metabolism this sort of thing what I'm more interested in now is what you were telling me about the, well, um, the, the very dangerous effects which you told me were due to some, some sort of long-term destruction of the cannabinoid receptors. This is what you believe yes, is happening. but it needs this small introduction which okay, I'm putting okay, right okay. now. All right, that sorry. there are yeah. enzymes which can, can clear those compounds from yeah, our right. body. Okay. And this is what happens to marijuana. Yeah. But this enzyme cytochrome P450 to C9, which is extremely polymorphic, and this is the major player in our body which helps to clean the mouth. Yes, yes, that's and right. And there's people uh, who have this genetic defect. Therefore, they cannot process those compounds. Right. So what happens? We cannot excrete it from the body. Right. So they are moving in plasma all the time, getting to cannabinoid receptor, bind with very high affinity, and they are not displaceable. They stay over there. Right. But from my lecture, you know how many important function, function the cannabinoid yes. receptor yes. has. Yes. So all those fa uh, functions are disrupted. We cannot live in a normal way. We cannot do metabolism of lipids, kind of, okay. because this dangerous compound block the receptor and blocks with such potency that we cannot replace it. So these people manifest some kind of clinical symptoms of madness. Or, or That's what I show. Yes, yes, yes. yes because <clears throat> their cannabinoid receptors do not function, don't, don't, and then they anxiety, madness, aggressiveness, yes. self-destruction, yes. and some of them are even chained to the bed. You've seen it. Yes, I've seen yeah, it in yeah. the pictures in the hospital. They like for weeks as long and, as and, they and can. And what do the psychiatrists and the uh, in the hospitals make of all of this at the moment? A, they are confused because there's no, you know, this is very good that we have this incredible team in my university. We can, in children's hospital, mm. tell yeah. this person was on K2 sometimes. Yeah. The person say, but 
they are bringing even with them children. And you could, you could in principle, di uh, diagnose such a person by, by MS, by, by, taking yeah, a by little bit of yes. from the urine sample. This is yeah. what we do, yeah. and we yeah. have a special kit yeah. which we just can send to hospital, and then doctors know. But knowing and helping, uh, or and helping, the two different things. You think it's not possible to deal with it? You think that this is almost? I think you said to me that that there's nothing you can do it, for the for the people who yeah. has this genetic effect. Yes. but it's not entirely. A true that we cannot help them. We cannot help them right now, but with the money which we got, yes. we are working on finding spe specific agonists which can kick those compounds. Well, well, in fact, maybe marijuana itself would would kick that uh, stuff up. That's a very out, good it? question. A, a point you said this before, and there there is some indication that marijuana users, or people who use marijuana, in the same time as K2, are safe. Not totally, no. but those two compounds at least but it, but compete. But it, 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 clears, it, enough clears. it clears enough receptors yeah. for them to function normally, yeah. yes? So we're looking into following thing. We're looking for antagonists which will fight those compounds, kick them out. Well, displace, you mean. Displace yeah. them. Yeah. So, yeah. Or, and, and in the same time, we will produce new, fresh cannabinoid receptor. We're also looking for antibodies. This is extremely important. For example, people who, co uh, who, who commit a suicide taking a Tylenol, uh, we have in our university a specific antibody. And even people who took 50 grams of Tylenol can be safe because of antibody has right, this. So right. we are looking for option of right. antibody. But this is a very long process. First of all, the doctor has to recognize that the person is not just schizophrenic, schizophrenic or, or you know, Whatever. anxiety, yeah, yes. that it has serious problem. Yes. Recognize. And it helps our kit, which shows in the urine, drop of urine, yeah. half an hour later, we go to the doctor and say, this is K2 case. But for what you were telling me, if, you, if we think, or if you think, mm -hmm. that, it, that, that in some way the receptors themselves are destroyed by some sort of covalent conversion or, or some long-term effect, because you were saying, uh, well, maybe I should ask you, that the half-life of these K2 derivatives, the, these substances, uh, you know, it's not endless, is it? For, yes, but if you extend the half life yes. to metabolites which are produced. But even then, it wouldn't be more than 70, like six months seven, or something like that. No, would it? Uh, 72 hours. Yes, right. Uh, uh, the, it can be processed. So, so I mean, uh, uh, the, so in principle, I mean, all of this stuff will have left the person after, well, say, 140 hours, okay? But what you're saying is no, you're saying but there's some... But not the one who has deficiency. The one who has a deficiency, mutant, yes. Because right. then there's it no way It just goes round and round and round and round, I see, okay. We survive and you, we live and we don't have cancer, uh, unless we do, <laughs> <laughs> uh, because we can metabolize toxins. Yes. In this case, yes. the person yes. cannot yeah. metabolize toxins. What, what sort of, I mean, is it possible to, to uh, what's the word, to, to identify people with this um, uh, oh, genetic yeah. uh, Oh, yes, yes. The, the enzyme cytochrome yeah. P450-2C9 yeah. is the one which, metabolize, which metabolizes Wolfrin, Coumadin, for example. So um, in state, uh, states, United States, before the per person is put on a uh, blood thinner, yeah. then this specific kit genotyping mm. for this enzyme. Mm. So then the doctor knows, no, no, that person cannot what, take what, this. What's, what's the fraction of the population that you would consider uh, that is at High. risk? Hi, um, this is one of the major cytochromes B450. That's why, for example, the emergency treatment for people with overdose of uh, Wolfrin, they are the most frequent 
visit in the United I see. States. Okay. So you can extrapolate this to yeah, K terms. Right. Okay. But do you have a number? Number. Uh, well, say a percentage. Like one in ten, or one in five, or one in twenty, or something. Uh, you know, first of all, we have to start with the users. Yes. Yes. How many of the okay. users? Yes, but let's say. But it, 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 as far as the users are concerned, in a very uh, dramatic situation, will be 100 percent users, 25 percent of them. As much as that, one in As four. much, yes, like yes. K2. Okay. Yeah. Four people okay. go, okay. only three come back. So very from K2. So, so I mean, from what you say, that, that this seems to be the political problem. Exactly. That, and the political problem is that, that a, lo a large number of hospital uh, of admissions to to hospitals as a result of acute, apparently schizophrenic um, responses to smoking marijuana uh, are not at all schizophrenic. Uh, they're not schizophrenia. They're not classical no. schizophrenia. They're a toxic. They're a toxicological response to a substance which they can't metabolize because of a pre-existing genetic uh, problem. Yes. But yes. But also normal people, if they overdose, yeah. they will have the same. Okay. Okay. Uh, well, of course, it's just a, it's just yes, a question, just of, question of, 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 of how yes. much. Yes, that's right. Yes. So. Um, and so is there any, well, I mean, I've, I've asked you this, haven't I, that, that is there any hope for these people? Well, the hope for them, well, in, is, is to find some kind of me, uh, substance which will displace these metabolites. That's what these we are working yeah. on mm. it. Okay. But the first, the biggest hope and biggest uh, a thing which we promote is to collect all the information and make it public. And this is well, the, your newspaper. I shall do something about this. This is yes. your yeah, newspaper's yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, role to tell those dumb people: listen, it's not safe. Yes. You you want to wake up tomorrow and be yeah, fine. Yes. You might be dead. But you, you know the, the problem with people like that is they don't believe it, or they don't understand it, or or you know they don't care very often. You know because when you're young you think, hey, well I'm going to have a great time.